Okay, it's another about time uh, production. I'm going to try and do something a little different. This is the Lionel gas turbine <clears throat> number 64 that I videoed yesterday. And I said I'd probably go ahead and make a uh, how-to video of modifying these Lionels. Uh, this unit is, is used. I bought it used. It was uh, kind of beat up. I've done a lot of repair. Uh, see, I've already messed this up just now. I had it glued last night. I'll have to reset it again. Uh, then I had to touch them up with paint. They were pretty nasty. But I'll fix that. Uh, so it looks good. It has a different type of connection between the tender and the locomotive. Uh, I almost dropped the locomotive one time and it bent the pin that comes with Lionel. And when I made the mistake of trying to straighten it out, and then insert it and then it broke off inside so I had to rewire it so I could have a different type of setup and I'm going to change it again probably in the future but right now <clears throat> this is one I converted over to the uh, ESU lock sound decoder with the squeal so I'll just show it for a second uh, I did it last night we'll start up the diesel I'm going to hit F7, and that's a squeal. Now before I do that, I'm going to hit F5 and turn on the classification lights. I don't even think you can see them. I guess you can see this one here kind of blowing up. I'll turn out the light here for a second. It's in reverse. Uh, I put a 3 millimeter yellow glow in the tender. Uh, and it is bright. I mean, right, I think you can see it. So if this goes back, you'll hear the squeal. This, this metal shell just basically magnifies the sound and the speaker I have in here you'll see when I show you what I'm putting in these <clears throat> I was able to get six of them uh, they'll probably only fit in these Lionels they certainly won't fit in the Athens not even in the Genesis but they're that long wherever I am and big and Listen to this horn. It is awesome. Start up the gas turbine. Okay, I'm going to shut this guy down and uh, give it a shot of glue and set it aside while I open up the box of the one I'm going to convert. 
and then I can put this guy away till it's time to use it on a layout. So, I'll be back just a little bit. Okay, so this is unit 61, and it is new. Nowhere at all. I did have to repair this one rail, but that's okay. So take this apart. These are easy. When I take the screws out, I put them in something like this. So there's just four screws that hold it together. Hold the shell on anyway. One. Two. Then it's no more than just <clears throat> oops, taking the taking it out of the shell. And we're just going to put the shell aside. The ladders on these are, are ten times tougher than on the atherns, but still treat them like they're not. Power is off on the track. Well, I try and put them on the track just to give a little more stability. Now, you take these screws out, we're going to drop, we're going to take out the Lionel decoder. The nice thing about this, if you want to put it back together, <clears throat> well, it won't be quite as simple as you'd like to think, but... Because we're going to be chopping some wires off. Okay. So that's the discard. And then what we're going to do is we're going to unplug all of these things that are plugged into it. And we get to unsolder some wires as well. So we'll fire up the soldering iron. Got to wet my sponge. Meantime, we can start disconnecting some of these things. This is going to take out the speaker wire now. They're all different, so like I said, if you have to put them back together, you can. 
So this is the decoder. It's a good decoder. It's a new decoder. Okay. And now you have these here. And this one's different than the one I just did. Well, maybe not. But these are color coded. This goes to the lights, but we're going to remove it as well. And we'll use a different plug in for it. Speakers are good, but not what I want to use. So I'm going to remove them. They're just barely glued in. In fact, it's a wonder they don't make a lot of chatter noise. So you end up with two nice speakers. Like I say, they're new. <clears throat> then we can remove this guy. And maybe we'll find somebody that can use him. We're going to cut this. Eventually, and remove it. And we can unplug this little guy. And I think you notice it has two motors. And we're going to remove this light. Okay, so I removed this front light assembly. And I will make a different one. <clears throat> It'll start out with a tab looking somewhat like this. To kind of duplicate what I had. I'll then install two... Three millimeter yellow glows from Miniatronics. <clears throat> and then I will install the micro LEDs 
I'll tell you what, working upside down and backwards isn't as simple as I thought it would be. If I can figure out where anything is. And it'll look something like this. And then it just installs. Right up here on the front end. Replacing the one I just took off the factory. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Meantime, <clears throat> these eight wires here are just mirror image. And so I don't think I have a plug that fits this. So I'm going to take a second to look. It's, there's six, six points on it. And I want to take a look and see if I can find one real quick. Okay, well I do, but unfortunately the, this standardization hasn't gotten into this environment yet. So what I'm going to do is cut this off right at its plug. And then I have <coughs> wires that go together. So I have a gray and a gray. So I've got to strip the ends. And I have no idea where my wire stripper pliers went. Oh, really, I don't. So, I'll see if I can break a fingernail or two. There's that gray wire. And I'm stripping them kind of long because i got to twist them together. Okay. And I use these real expensive wire twister pliers. It's a clothespin, obviously. But it does a really good job. Of twisting these around. Now I've already done the homework. So I know. What each of these wires are. And I'll share that with you in a minute. But meantime. We've got the gray one. And we're going to. Tin it. Okay, now this one is kind of like a red wire, so we're going to do the same thing to it. Red and red, kind of like a brown in it. And we're going to join them and unholy whatever this is. Clockwise or counterclockwise, it don't matter. As long as they're twisted nice and tight. Just like that. A little flux. A little solder. Now you got a black wire. But be careful. Because you've also got a black wire with a red stripe. Or, they may have played one on you here. Okay, so this guy has given us two black wires. And now I've got to do a little bit more homework because this is different again than the last one. 
So this black wire here Okay, uh, it makes it kind of simple, I hope. These two black wires are coming off this side. So we're just going to assume that they are the right hand track feeds. Now the other one I did had a black and red wire, had a red stripe on it. And it was the right lead. But these are just black wires. So, we're just going to have to take a chance. But, sometimes it doesn't pay to take a chance, huh? So, of course, a simple way to find out if we're right is simply take an ohm meter. It doesn't have to be fancy or expensive. And we're going to touch that wire and then we're going to start touching wheels on this side and see what happens here. How nice they go to the right ones. Okay, the assumption paid off. Now we got the other set of black wires. Once again, we're just going to bear some wires here. And join them together. Get this back in. So now these guys are ready. We'll hook up the decoder. Now we already said we need a speaker in here. And the speaker hooks up directly to the decoder. So it doesn't hurt to get the speaker out and start putting it in place. Hi bud. What do you got? You turn Netflix on on the TV. You gotta use the TV and remember that button down on the bottom right? Punch it until it says PC on the TV, on the on the remote that we use for the for turning stations. On the bottom right, it's a little button. You push it until it says PC. And then you hit, turn this on, then hit Netflix.
Okay, so this is the speaker. You can see it's pretty good sized. Well, it's just tough trying to figure out where this camera is working. So I hope I'm not getting out of your view very often. Okie dokies. Aha. We'll strip these now because I don't want to have to mess with them later. And tin them. Doesn't matter black or white, we're only using one speaker, so there is no positive or negative, you can just hook them up any way you want. If I hook up a set of them, I usually try and go in parallel. Works out well. Now, this guy fits in here really, really nice. And what I do is I put it down on this end to let that wire kind of take over. But it's kind of wobbly. So what I do is take a couple toothpicks. If you ever watch any of my video, you know those are some of my most cherished tools. And And then just center it. You got a lot of room here to play. And the reason I want it down as far as I can, because I'm going to put the decoder right here. So I want it to fit in as well as it can. So once I get it set, I don't want to touch this end, and it's not. But what I'm going to do is take some canopy glue this stuff and do a four corner Three, four. My toothpick gets stuck. I'm not going to concern myself with it. I will just chop it off later. Okay. You look in there later, you don't really think you got it stuck like you want. You go ahead and give it another shot. You can also take another toothpick and just kind of 
move it in so it kind of bunches up in there. Kind of like so. The neat thing about this, it'll suspend this, the speaker, it'll just be floating on that rubber pad. Okay, and just let that set. Now this light back here, I think you can see it doesn't have any power feed to it yet. But I'm going to feed 12 volts to it. I haven't quite figured out what that resistor is. i got to do a color code on it. But what I did last night was I fed it in and then it was wired differently. This one is, take these two wires right here are going back to the tender. I don't know if you can really see them. I guess I can zoom in here for just a second. Okay, let's do this. So this is a LED, but it has a blue tint to it. I don't like it. I'm in hopes this is just a connector. But these two wires go back to the tender. There's a plug underneath here. There's these two points right over here. I'm going to cut this off fairly high because I want to put in a three millimeter LED, yellow glow, and to do that without damaging it is not the most simple thing in the world. So what I do is I straighten these out, and then I bend them over, like so. Like so. And then I will solder the three millimeter yellow glow onto these and have the wire come up like so and come back so it has I can go ahead and use the uh, tweezers as an insulator. So to do that I'm going to turn this around. You can see I've already kind of knocked that around a little bit. See, it'll take a little while for it to get tacky enough that it won't move. And if necessary, I can add more hockey puck once I take the toothpicks out. But right now it looks okay. Again, as long as it doesn't protrude beyond this point, I'm fine. And it hasn't done that, so... And probably won't. So we're in good shape for the shape we're in. Now, to get power to this light, I need a plug and these little plugs I bought are not the standard size but I have them
So like I have on this speaker, this is a new speaker, but that's okay. So we'll just cut it off because we need it for this. And it's going to get the yellow light, so we can go ahead and cut it short. And strip it. And ten, so we've got this, whatever it is, plug in. That we can use. It'll plug in to this once we hook some wires to it. So we're going to put a blue wire on the black and a yellow wire on the red. So we're basically ready for the decoder. So this will lock sound. 75403. Started out in this world as a <coughs> I'm going to turn this off because I've tested these before and shown you how I do it. So I'm not going to waste film on doing that again. But I'm going to test the decoder before I install it. And then we'll be back. Okay, the decoder tested out fine. <coughs> because this is not a 8 pin. I cut this off. I use these, uh, especially this type, <clears throat> I'll keep it because it will become used for another process. I use them on my uh, RDCs. What? I came upstairs because I heard a lot of bumping downstairs. So I came up to see if you fell or not. No. Because I remember the boxes thing there to where you might be able to trip. Oh. Uh. I thought you fell. But you didn't. Nope, oh, I didn't fall. Thanks, so bad. Okay, so the black wire will strip. What? I'm talking, I'm making a video, buddy. Okay. Good night. I love you too. <laughs> Ten year old great grandson, he's suffered a broken arm on Monday. Today's Wednesday. He has to go back to school tomorrow. We're trying to get him to go to sleep. He's got to sleep in a chair so he doesn't hurt his elbow which is where the brake is unfortunately. So we're going to need a uh, heat shrink and this is the right this is the left so we know that's going to be where it goes with the black lead
don't quite need that much, so we'll cut some of it off. We'll use the tweezers. Get the gray wire out of the way. <clears throat> got some solder. I got the light so high it's really not doing me much good here, so this may be a little more difficult than I like. That worked out okay. <clears throat> shrink. This will go down over that wire. If I want it to kind of go up just a little bit over the two wires. Doesn't have to go very far, but I want it to get above it somewhat. And sometimes I think I may need a little bit bigger. That's good enough. We got the orange wire, the motor lead. Da -da -da -da. Yellow, orange. And we're going to do the same thing. Strip it back. Try and get it halfway straight anyway. Some fresh solder. Tin. piece of shrink a little bit larger but it may work out better in the long run so we'll see tweezers A little bit better view this time. And the orange wire is on. Bring the shrink up over the wires. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. The red wire. Need a little bit more solder, I guess. There we go.
I'm just grabbing shrink. It doesn't really make any difference what color it is. Okay, looking good. Okay, then the gray wire. Gives us two motor leads. Takes care of that. And the gray wire. And it don't need to be that long. A fresh solder. Okay, then the white wire <clears throat> will go to the headlight, so now might be a good time to just go ahead and put that on. And it just fits. Actually, we can just go ahead and solder it up. <clears throat> so it needs a 470 resistor. This is going to get 12 volts from this decoder. So we'll strip this guy right here. I used the tweezers for two reasons. One, it holds it. Another one is a heat sink. Protects the uh, resistor. We'll tin this guy. And then we'll put some shrink on it.
that went much flatter on this because we need to get the shrink over it. Take care of that. Bring this up over. And then we'll use a soldering iron to shrink it down a little bit over the solder joint there. Just so it just doesn't let it slip off. Okay. <clears throat> now this is no nothing more than just this guy's gotta be different. The motor is sitting up to the point that this interferes. So we're going to see what we can do here to get it not to interfere so much. And we just got to make sure that the lights don't touch. <sighs> the frame of the motor. And that's going to be tough to do. So we're going to fix it so we don't have to worry about it happening. Okay. This might end up being a problem. It's just not quite down where it needs to be. <clears throat> so we'll have to see what happens when we uh, put the shell on. Because I may have to make a different type of light fixture so it gets down flush. But we shall see. I guess if I was in the hole, it would work better.
We'll have to see how that works out. Okay. Now these two guys here are coming off of the classification lights. And they hook up to the turquoise wire off the back of the decoder. And they're long enough you can cut the turquoise wire fairly short, but don't get too carried away. And that lets you use F5. So we're going to take these two guys and since the decoder is going to go here we can cut these fairly short. These things have like a lacquer insulation on them so <clears throat> when you strip them be careful. But what you're looking for is just to get the lacquer off of it. Be careful you don't take some of the wire with it because you need all the wire there is there. Okay. It's taken me a while to really get fairly decently good at that, so. Okie dokies. So that's tinned. Okay. And then we're going to put piece of shrink on this on the lavender wire uh -huh. I need to tin it yet These wires are so small you get away with a small shrink. Okie dokies. And that takes care of that. Bring it up over the top. That takes care of that guy. Then you got a yellow wire. So now what I'm going to do is turn this thing around and show you how I do that back one. So, it's pretty well set. Now that I got it on this side, I can kind of see what I'm doing. Kind of 
at least. Okay. I need a three millimeter yellow glow. Let's see if I have one left in here. Yep, I do. So I got one more in there. I need it for the tender. <clears throat> so I know that the long lead goes on this side, that's where the resistor is. So what I want to do is this. Okay. Okay. And that's it. I can still bend this down and shape it a little bit more if I have to. Now I want to cut off these little spike ends here. And as I cut these off, if I got a weak joint, it will let me know right now. Okay. <clears throat> There's my back motor lead and I just really messed up my speaker but there's still sticking so it's fine speaker wires coming off this are the two brown wires off this decoder right here is one of them and here is the other. And again, it doesn't matter where they go. So, so the decoder is going to go up here. You can almost, once this is laid down, it'll come back in just like so. 
So the brown wires are coming off that end, so we're going to use full length. We can always bury them somewhere. And again, these can be any color, it doesn't matter. Just don't matter. There we go. And the black lead. And the other brown wire. Okay. So shrink. Whoa, dude, you don't look good at all. Didn't get enough flux on it. That looks better. Okie dokies. Get some more solder out here. Play with. Okay. Start clean. I like it. Okay. Then there's the yellow wire. Now, this guy Gets to go to our little plug. Uh, 
But I gotta take a break to find. Okay, so I found it. <clears throat> and I've hooked up some wires to it. I've got plenty of wire now. I'm not gonna worry about it. The blue wire, of course, is gonna have to come up. And it will join the blue wire off the decoder, which is this guy right here in the middle. Excuse me. And again, I'm just leaving all these wires long tonight, so just for the heck of it. I will bundle them up. So this blue wire <coughs> and this blue wire. Let's see how this works out. Be okay. We'll join them together. Just like a so. <coughs> Excuse me. These aren't the best wire twister pliers, but they're so cheap, I just don't ever complain about them. They do what I need done. So this is the decoder wire and the backlight. Then, you take the blue wire off the headlights. No, I'm wondering why there's only one. Okay, now you take the blue wire and then you take these two common positives off of the micro wires. And once again, we're going to very carefully remove the insulation. And then twist them together with the blue wire. It's always fun trying to get three of them together. This guy really doesn't look like he's stripped. But he must be. But he's not. Now he is. And that guy is. And the blue wire is.
So once you get them all together, Once you get them all together, you get your handy dandy twister pliers. You find out you failed. Blue wire is not attached to the other two. So you kind of start all over. And now it is okay. And this rascal. Hooks up. to this rascal. And to make sure this doesn't come apart again, we're going to hold it like that. We're going to find some shrink. And it can be small. Dab a clean solder. I may be kidding myself if I think I can get all this go over the top, so, but we'll see. Because it looks kind of fat, but maybe not. Hope it worked. Don't even need to heat it. <clears throat> now what we have left here are these kind of wires here. And these are aux wires, which means they're running a lot of voltage. So we want to make sure that we take those rascals and cut off the ends. We'll cut them shorter later, but right now we're just going to do a test. And bring the insulation up over the end zone. We got one more somewhere here. Should be a green. A 
green wire. Hello, Mr. Green Jeans. Okay, the other thing is just make sure they're not touching anything. You know? Okay, double, 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 double check. Make sure there's no bare wires that can touch anything. We can now plug this guy in. <clears throat> Again, we'll double check our wires. Watch for fire and smoke. I'm plugged in. Track's clear. Let's see if the motor will start. We're in reverse. Let's see if we have a light. And we do. Quite bright. Let's go to forward, see if we have lights. Let's turn on number five. We've got lights. Let's see if we go forward, which is that way. And we do. Let's see if we can go backwards. Remember it's new, so if it's jerky, it just has not been broke in and it has sat for some time. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. Yeah, it's loud. What do we really like about this decoder? Ain't that sweet? Squeal, squeal! And can it make a lot of noise?
I gotta tell you, the sound of this speaker is it is the most mellow of any of them. I don't care whose they were, even even the ones I did before on the uh, Atherns. Uh, this and when you put that metal case on it, it's even more more thunderous. It's just I hope you can hear it on the uh, recording. Uh, I doubt you can because it's just awesome. Such a improved sound over what uh, they have, that Lionel had put on these things. Now Lionel did a good job. I mean, these these are old old technology decoders, obviously, compared to what we have today. So uh, Lionel did a good job. Their decoders are nice, but this ESU lock sound uh, select uh, it just has them all beat. Just has them all beat. So I'm going to let this set. Tomorrow I'll, I'll get back on this thing and I'll show you how I wrap these wires up. I'm going to shrink everything up. It's all good. And uh, I'll show you what I do inside the shell because there's a couple things I've got to do inside the shell yet to make this thing work. So, until tomorrow. It won't seem that long. <laughs> okay, everything's pretty well cured. I think you can see this. This is one of the loose wires. I've cut it short and then I put just a little bead of canopy glue on it. I think you can see it right there on my finger, right in the middle of the tip. There's three wires you got to do that to the green and the I don't know what it is. It's not the turquoise one, it's the other one. It's kind of like a lavender. And there's the green one. And I don't know where the third one went, but they're all done. <clears throat> then I've used some electrician's tape to bundle these up so when the show goes on it'll flatten it out and it should work out just fine. Now I did the tender and I'm having to touch up a little bit of the paint on it but what I wanted to do was show you how I put the new light in the tender. Uh, one other thing I want to show you is this backlight sits up and I've measured it and it should be just almost perfect to sit in there but what I did was I put in some red electrician's tape so just in case it does possibly get up in there it can't touch metal it shouldn't but shouldn't couldn't wouldn't and didn't uh, well you understand this area here where it goes in. This is different. This has been really moved, opened up a lot. So as this area here goes in, it may depress this light down a little bit, and that's fine as it goes up in that hole. But then the wires, everything else, are, are way out of the way. It should ever work fine. The classification lights should tuck right in between between this piece right here and this piece the main lights go inside. This part right here the width is just narrower than this it should fit in perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and get another tender out and I'll show you how I convert the tender real quick. Okay so here's another tender this is for 73 which is the one I'm going to convert next. So I'll just get a head start on it, I guess. There's only four screws. This is really a pretty simple. I got to give to Lionel. They don't. Uh, they don't really complicate much with these things. Soldering iron heating up because I'm going to need it. This guy doesn't want to come out. We need a little bit more magnetism. Don't know. Almost all these screws are just the same. I mean, it's it's really nice that they did that because I'm not having to figure out where the screws go. Now, one thing you might want to try and keep in mind is how these wires come out. But it really doesn't matter that much. If you don't, it's uh, not that big a deal. 
this just pulls out and then it has nothing to do with anything and then you can see the light assembly in the back here I'm pretty sure move the light over a little bit more so it gets more into it so there's the light assembly it has one screw that holds it And it has a standoff. That you can see in there. So. Once you've got that out. You can put this aside. Carefully. I don't want to lose this screw, however I do have an extra. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to have to find another yellow glow. These have a blue tint to them, and they just solder in. So, what I've got to do is remove it. So give me a second and I'll find the new bulb and then we'll get back. Okay, to I'm out of my three millimeters <clears throat> and I could use a two millimeter tower, but I'm gonna go ahead and use a five millimeter. It's it's pretty it's gonna be really big and bright in there, but it doesn't really matter because this metal doesn't allow bleed like the plastic ones would. So I bend it so it looks the same as it's bent basically at the same point as this one is for the distance up to where it needs to go. And now what I'm going to have to do, though, is I have to remove this guy. And the way I do that, and I know it's just going to go up almost a tenth of an inch. But I'm going to cut it off. It doesn't matter where. I'm never going to use this bulb, so I don't care if I lose it or not. Then, I'm going to use one of my pair of tweezers to hold this in place. As soon as I find one. Ta-da! And what I'm going to do is take the soldering iron and put it on to this lead and then just pull it out and I've got to use my vise which is not within camera range so I'll do that and then come back yeah I'm not sure you can really tell but this this leaves uh, when it came out I was lucky this time because it left a small indentation I'm trying to work backwards here so it's these two right here and I'm going to take a 7 millimeter 0 0.07 millimeter drill and open that up then I'll put the light in and then I'll show you what I do next I said 0 0.7 is a 0 0.70 millimeter and like I see these dimpled out for me really nice so using the finger vise I go ahead and drill this out Carefully, these, these drill bits break so incredibly easily. That's one. And that's two. Take it all the way up and try and open that hole up as well as you can. Okay, now get rid of the metal.
and again it was up like a tenth of an inch but since this bulb is so much bigger you're going to lower it just a little bit from where that was so I'm bringing that down just a little bit more now to secure the bulb kind of make sure the bulb is as square as you can get it and then work from the bottom because you really can't protect it and put a little bit of solder paste on it not solder paste but some flux okay double check still get it nice and square and like I said I've, I've got it down a little bit more than what it was then just put some solder on the tip of your iron and touch it and that's it and now you got the new bulb installed I don't think I was in range but what I did was I just barely touched the tip of the soldering iron right to the stem where it goes in. Okay, now you can just go ahead and cut off this excess. And it doesn't matter if it stands up a little bit because it's going nowhere. Straighten it out. Okay. So now we're going to put this back in. Maybe. So we'll try and get that down in place. best we can since I made that mistake now I get to fight with the wires but it doesn't matter really except it's just going to take me longer to do what shouldn't have taken me this long to do Okie dokies, maybe this is where it goes. No, that's not where it goes. That's where it goes, I think.
Okay. So it's in place, but the bulb is a little bit too long. So maybe I can just force it down. And I did. So it's fine. And it will be bright. Now what happened though, doing all that was I twist I turned these around. So this one goes here, and again it's not real important. And this one goes over here. Again, it's not real important. You can't go wrong with this because it has these little notches for the wires. So you can put that in place. And then make sure these are in the notch where they belong. Just like so. It's got a knot on it to keep her from coming out too far. So watch for that. Okay, make sure they're loose. Now it's just nothing more than putting the four screws back in. And then we can test it. So I'll do that, we'll hook it up, we'll see if it works. <clears throat> okay, I've got the tender hooked up. I think you can see these, these things, these, this one's just barely used, but it's got just a few areas, and I just can't find the, the perfect color. For that it's either a blue tint or it's too gray or just have not found the right color um crap i just don't know what to do with it i may mix a little bit of this blue with a, a lighter gray and see if i can find something that matches i've got an extra one that uh, was is for parts and i i try and experiment with that one but let's see what happens here <clears throat> we'll plug the system back in And turn it on reverse, and I don't have a light on the tender. So what that tells me is I've got them plugged in backwards. Not a big thing. Be very careful with these. They're, if you ever bend one, don't straighten it back out because when you do that, next time you try and do something with it, it will probably break. This is going to make it pretty close. If I put it in the socket, it would probably work much better. And now I have a light. Now I'll see if I can stand this up to show you. I'll turn this light out. And I just unplugged it. So I'll turn this light back on, and I will plug this in again, maybe, see if it'll work this time. Okay, you can see it. It's it's on. Unfortunately, it popped the light out a little bit with that big freaking bulb. Not enough to really get too terribly concerned. So that works. 
and this is supposed to be a yellow glow but it looks oh there it is okay looks a little bit blue but it's really not so this tender is done now and it can just wait until the locomotive is done and again these pins be very careful with them that I broke one off inside the receptacle and there's <clears throat> no way I know of getting it out so I did a different wiring system and I'm going to find me some paint that actually works to touch these up so the light is standing out a little bit but it doesn't matter it would it'll look it'll look fine regardless so I think you can see it's just out a little bit but it don't want to go in because that light bulb is in the way but it lights up that's the, that's the that's the goal so now what we get to do the shell is ready everything is turned off everything is in place and the shell should just slide right back over everything even though you think you got everything where it belongs you still want to watch out for wires it went down all the way front and back so we are in business and now it's nothing more than putting those four screws back in Four little screws. They're machine screws and they're going in the metal, so and you get about four or five threads into it, so it's it is good. By taking all these decoders out, I've ended up with a bunch of extra screws for these. So, if you're missing some, drop me a note and I will send you a couple of them. I hate it when I can't <coughs> find these screws that mount the shell to the, to the body. And figuring out exactly what the size is is really tough unless you have a good chart and I do but 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 it's always the last one always the last one it gives you fits wants to go in crooked or whatever Snug them up. Try not to over torque. This one is still not down all the way. Close enough. Okay. Put her back on the track.
bring the tender up. You can see it's got a lot of wire hanging out of it. Okay. Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Took care of that button. Now they're going to take care of this one. Okay, then these wires should go back up inside. They don't seem to want to. So for now, we'll just leave it like this. We can shorten them later. Okay, so we'll start out by hooking it up. <coughs> and we will fire it up. Let's bring the camera down. <clears throat> we get a better view of this thing. Okay, so it's in reverse right now. So you can see the light there. And this light is nothing but bright, I'm telling you. We're going to hit F7. Get our squeal. And we'll put her in forward. And my thumb will touch the thing that makes it go crazy. <laughs> Sorry about that.
that concludes this how-to. I hope it helps you. Uh, like I say, I will do these for customers. And I'm going to start putting some of these parts that I've taken off, like the decoders and some of the headlight assemblies, because if you have one and those aren't working any longer, uh, and that's all you want to do is just replace the decoder, uh, I have no need for it, so I'll make it available for a nominal fee. It won't be very much. And then I'll put this on eBay probably today, which I think is the 18th of May, 2018. So, thanks for watching. Please leave notes. Uh, and subscribe. Thank you very much.